So here is my second example of limiting reactant and excess reactants in stoichiometry. If you haven't watched the first video, the one before this, I would highly recommend it because in that video I explain what is a limiting and what is an excess reactant. In this one I'm just going to go over one more example. Um, in the last video I also sort of went through the eight simple steps a little more clearly. You can pause this and write them down or you can go back to the last video and get a closer look at what these mean. But this is how I do limiting reactant. When we get to excess reactant, these are the five simple steps that I use. So again, you can pause this if you need to write them down. You can go to the last video and get a little more uh, information about these as well. I'm just trying to do one more example for those people that needed some help. All right, so our next example is going to be this. Nickel reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce nickel 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. If 5.00 grams of nickel and 2.50 grams of hydrochloric acid uh, react, determine the limiting reactant, the mass of the excess reactant after the reaction is complete, and the mass of nickel 2 chloride produced. So there's actually three questions in this problem. But if you stick with those steps, the eight simple steps and then the five simple steps, you're going to answer all of these. You may not answer them in order, but that doesn't matter. You're going to answer all of them. You'll go back, you pick out your um, the answers that you want to include for each of these three questions, put a circle around them, and you're good to go. So I'm going to switch over to the other view, and we'll look at this problem. All right, we've got our other view. Again, I've already got everything written out on this paper just for time. It takes a long time to do these limiting reactants, especially if I write everything out. I would highly encourage you, especially because you have the option of pausing, fast-forwarding, reversing, whatever, um, to write these things down along with me, and it'll really help you out. So figure out your way that's going to work best for you. I'm just going to work through the steps. So if we look right here, here is the exact same problem that was on the other page, and here are the eight simple steps. Number one says start with a balanced chemical equation. I've done that right here. I've got nickel reacts with hydrochloric acid. This is hydrochloric acid. Those react together to form nickel 2 chloride. Now you need to remember that nickel 2 chloride means nickel 2 plus. And when I look up the oxidation state for chlorine on my periodic table, chlorine is 1 minus. So in order to get that 2 plus and that 1 minus to even out, I have to have NiCl2. Some people get confused and think that that needs to be the subscript for nickel. Don't make that mistake. It'll throw everything off down the road. Okay. And then the other thing to remember is hydrogen. So hydrogen never lives by itself. Hydrogen gas, right here, is a diatomic. All right. You got to remember that, and that is going to be H2. Again, I've left the states of matter off of here just for space. Technically, they should be included. But we have our balanced chemical equation, so we're done with that. Next part, convert all known reactants from grams to moles. Now, what does that mean, our known reactants? The knowns are what's given to us in the equation. So we went to the store and we bought 5 grams of nickel and we bought 2.5 grams of a hydrochloric acid. That's our known. Sometimes we call that the given. For some reason, I call it the known. We need to convert those knowns from grams into moles because in stoichiometry, we do everything in moles. I've done that right here. I've got 5 grams of nickel, and I need to turn that into moles of nickel over here. The way to do that is a conversion factor with grams of nickel on the bottom so that these will cancel out. Then I've got moles of nickel on the top right here. Um, and I get this number, if you're wondering, from the mass of nickel on the periodic table. I do the math, I get 0 0.085 moles of nickel. I need to do the same thing for the hydrochloric acid. So. I purchased 2.5 grams of hydrochloric acid. I need to get that into moles of hydrochloric acid. The way I do that is add up the molar mass of hydrochloric acid. I find that hydrogen is 1.01. .01. I look up chlorine. I add those two together to get the molar mass. I get 36.46. When I do this, there should be, see that um, decimal there, 0 0.069 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now we're done with number two. Number three says write the mole ratio of reactants from the balanced chemical equation. What we're doing in steps three, four, and five is figuring out, okay, which one of these is our limiting reactant? Which one of these is going to determine how much product we can actually make? Because eventually the limiting reactant is the one that we're going to run out of and the reaction will stop working. 
So here's um, what I think the easiest way to do that. Again, more information on the last video if you need help with this. So again, on number three here, we're trying to write the mole ratio of reactants from the balanced chemical equation. Here are the reactants, and we're going to write a mole ratio. Now you can choose to put either one of these on top. You can put nickel on the top and hydrochloric acid on the bottom, or vice versa. And I've chosen to put nickel on the top and hydrochloric acid on the bottom just because I did it in the flip-flop in the other example. So um, this will show you how to do it the other way because it doesn't really matter how you do it. You'll come up with the same answer as long you, as you stick with the steps. We've got one mole of nickel right here, getting my one from right there. There's an imaginary one. And I put that over two moles of hydrochloric acid. Here's my two moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so I've done this part from the balanced chemical equation. Now I need to divide the ratio to get my answer over one. So if I take one divided by two, I get 0.5. So I'm going to change these out. All right, this should give me 0.5. And if I put 0.5 over one, it's still 0.5. So 0.5 over one is still 0.5. Now, all I have to do then is move these over, and I've got my new ratio. I'm going to clean this up. So all I've done here is clean this up. I uh, put 0.5 over 1, and my units have to stay the same because there wasn't anything to cancel them out. So I've done these parts. Now, you'll understand why I put it over 1 here in just a second. Number 4 says write the mole ratio of reactants from the known moles. Okay, from the known moles. If I go back up here, these were the knowns. They're in grams. We already turned them into moles down here, though. So we've got our known moles. And as long as we keep the same thing on the bottom, moles of hydrochloric acid and moles of nickel on the top, will be good. And I get them from right here. So I've got my moles of hydrochloric acid. I'm going to put that right here on the bottom. A little piece came with it. Let's clean that up. And I'm going to put my moles of nickel up here on the top. If it'll come with me. I have to excuse my handwriting. And then I'll put my division line underneath here. Ignore this for just a moment. And now I've got from my recipe in my balanced chemical equation 0.5 moles of nickel for every one mole of hydrochloric acid. That means that's what I should have bought at the store. That's what my recipe calls for. Here's what I actually bought at the store. 0 0.085 moles of nickel um, and 0 0.069 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now, I can't compare those very easily. So that's why we want to get it over 1. It says divide the ratio to get an answer over 1. If I take 0 0.085 divided by 0 0.069, I get this, 1.23. Now these units stay the same because there wasn't anything to cancel them out. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these real fast and get rid of this because I've simplified it right here. Let me grab this and bring it over so we can easily compare these. Now we're just comparing. The blue is from the balanced chemical equation. The green is what we bought at the store. All right. If I look, it says we should have 0.5 moles of nickel for every one mole of hydrochloric acid. When I went to the store, I bought 1.23 moles of nickel for every one mole of hydrochloric acid, which means I bought more than I needed. So I'm not going to run out of nickel. I'm going to have nickel left over, which means nickel's not my limiting reactant. It is my excess reactant. And because I only have, come up here and look at my reactants, because I only have two reactants, if nickel is going to be left over, it must mean that hydrochloric acid is eventually the one that's going to run out. So it's going to be our limiting reactant. With that, we've just completed number four. And actually, we've completed number five because we figured out our excess reactant and in turn figured out our limiting reactant. So now we've got to calculate the moles of product from the limiting reactant. Moles of product, that's the one we're trying to figure out, which means... We look back at our question, determine the limiting reactant. We've already done that. The mass of excess reactant after the reaction is complete. We haven't done that yet. And in fact, we're going to get to that one, but we're going to do it out of order. And that's perfectly fine. Again, if you work through all of these steps, you're going to answer all of these questions in an order that I think is a little more understandable. 
and the mass of nickel-2 chloride produced. So we actually produce two things. But the question is focused on this one, nickel-2 chloride right here. So when we come down here, calculate moles of product, we're focused on the nickel-2 chloride. Let's look at that. So here's what I've done. Calculate moles of product from the limiting reactant. Limiting reactant is HCl. We start with moles of HCl because we do all of our stoichiometry in moles. I got this number from right up here. And in order to convert that, I put moles of HCl on the bottom and moles of nickel uh, to chloride on the top. Where do I get this 1 and the 2 for my mole ratio? I always get that from my balanced chemical equation. So for moles of nickel 2 chloride, I've got a 1 here. And for moles of hydrochloric acid, let me go back up, I've got a 2 right here. So that's where those numbers came from. I do the math, I get 0 0.0345 moles of nickel 2 chloride. Now, I've solved for moles, but moles doesn't do me any good in the real world in a lab. I need to have it in mass. So I need to turn that answer into mass. I take this because I ran out of room, so I've moved it over here. And I need to turn it into mass, so I need a conversion factor with moles on the bottom to cancel this out. And I need grams on the top so I can get my answer in grams over here. Well, where do I get this? One mole of nickel-2 chloride is how many grams of nickel-2 chloride? Well, I need to add it up, so i got to use my periodic table, find the mass of nickel. I have one nickel, 58.69 grams. I have two chlorines at 35.45 each. I add this together. This tells me right here, I've simplified it um, to four significant figures. This tells me the mass of nickel-2 chloride. Now, these are going to cancel out. I take 0 0.0345 times 129.6, and I get 4.47 grams of nickel-2 chloride, which means I've just answered this part of the question, the mass of the nickel-2 chloride. So I'm almost done. I've determined the limiting reactant. I've determined the mass of the nickel-2 chloride. The only thing left is the mass of the excess reactant after the reaction is complete. Well, how do I do that? I go to my next five steps. Got them right down here. And let me try to make this a little larger so you can see it. If it will. I apologize. Okay. So the five simple steps. First, perform all the steps for limiting reactant stoichiometry. Well, that was easy. Now we're done with that. We did it up here. Calculate the moles of excess reactant from starting moles of limiting reactant. Okay. The excess reactant. Calculate moles of excess reactant. Okay, excess reactant is nickel, so I need to calculate the moles of that. And I need to start with the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is right here, hydrochloric acid. Now, I already turned hydrochloric acid into moles right here. So I'm going to take that number, and that's what I'm going to start with down here. There you go, 0 0.069 moles of hydrochloric acid. I'm turning that into moles of nickel, so I need a conversion factor with hydrochloric acid on the bottom so that these will cancel out and moles of nickel on top. And where do I get these numbers? Moles of nickel and moles of hydrochloric acid? Let me scroll up. Those always come from our balanced chemical equation. Two and one. There's an imaginary one. Let me scroll down. Okay. Anytime we have mole and mole, that's a mole ratio. We go back to our balanced chemical equation. And here's what I get. 0 0.0345 moles of nickel. I'm done with number two. Now, convert moles of excess reactant to grams. I need it in grams. So I've taken this number, moved it down here, and how do I turn something in moles into gram? I use molar mass. So one mole of nickel is how many grams of nickel? Look it up on the periodic table, and I do the math, I get 2.02 .02 grams of nickel. Now what is that? That is how much is needed for the reaction to happen. That's how much of the nickel is going to be used up um, once I finally run out of my hydrochloric acid, which is my limiting reactant, that's going to be the number right down here. So this needed is right here. Next step, where does um, the available come from? Where does that? Let me grab red. That's what we bought at the store. Let's go all the way back to the top. Now we need to find this for nickel. We bought 5 grams of nickel when we were at the store. When we run this reaction, we've just found out 
that we're going to use 2.02 grams of that during the reaction. So we take what we started with, available, what we bought at the store, subtract out what's going to get used up in the reaction, and this tells us how much nickel is going to be left after we run this whole thing, which means we're not going to need to buy a whole bunch of nickel next time we want to do this reaction because we have some left over. And again, number five is always important because, as I've mentioned, this stuff can be challenging. The fact that you can do it is pretty amazing. So, uh, again, if you missed the first video and you need another example, go back and check that one out. And before long, there'll be some help for percent yield coming up, so you can check out that video as well. Uh, but keep on working your way through stoichiometry. You're doing great. Keep it up. See ya.